This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about mechanics of solids, <clears throat> CE 3303. We're in chapter 9. We're talking about um, stresses and how they're expressed at different orientations. You know, we live in a three dimensional world, so we have stresses in three dimensions in most materials. But we want to simplify them down to two-dimensional or plain stress. It's convenient for us to do calculations in the format of y and x and the shear in the xy direction because it's equal complementary in both directions. And so up here we have our sign conventions. And uh, we're going to assume y is the top uh, direction axis x is positive to the right so sigma x is positive or tension on the right face sigma y is positive up its tension and shear stress is positive on the right side of this stress element positive up in the y direction of course it's complementary in the uh, horizontal direction there okay so that's con that's how we calculate the stresses because it's convenient we think about an XY orientation to everything but really we need to be able to figure out the stress at any orientation of a stress element in there so we're going to rotate this stress element by an angle in this case positive sign convention is positive theta is the angle and that's measured positive counterclockwise from the x-axis. So then we have a new x prime axis, y prime axis, and we have a new different sigma x, a normal stress in the x prime direction, sigma y prime, normal stress in the y prime direction, and a new shear stress tau xy x prime y prime okay how do we figure these values of these new stresses what we're going to do is we're going to do a equilibrium sum of forces equations and what we're going to do is we're going to section the xy block with a line at an angle perpendicular to the plane that we want to uh, calculate the sigma x prime stresses on. And I've shown that block over here. That angle is theta, just like that angle is theta. And what we we're going to define this area, this sloping area, as delta A. So by trig, we can see that the area of this side down here on the bottom of the y side is delta A sine theta and this area over here the vertical plane is delta A times the cosine of theta then we put the stresses that we know and that we're trying to find out on those surfaces we don't know sigma x prime we multiply it, it but it it exists over here outward positive direction tau x prime y prime and then we have sigma y sigma x and tau x y then these are stresses and we need forces so we're going to multiply the stresses times the areas delta a in this case for these two that we don't know sigma x prime and delta A cosine theta, delta A sine theta over here. Then we are going to sum forces in the x prime direction and we write out these equations. For instance, we have sigma x prime delta A is the force in the x prime direction positive to the right. And then all these others are negative. Uh, we're going to take that the components of that in the x prime direction 
And so those work out to be things like sigma y delta a sine theta times the component of that in the x prime direction. It's going back this direction, so it's negative, and it's the sine of that angle theta. We follow that process through with all four of these forces, and we get this equation. We can simplify it somewhat down to this form. Sigma x prime is equal to all this stuff here. Sigma x cosine squared, blah, blah, blah. Similarly, we can sum forces in the y prime direction. y prime is the direction of tau x prime y prime. Delta A makes it a force. And so we just do the same thing, write out all the knowns and unknowns, and we can simplify that down to tau x y. x prime y prime is equal to this expression. Now we can continue that. If you look in the textbook on page 443 for sigma y prime, what I'd, I've shown a little block of it down here in this lower right hand corner, you just cut a section um, parallel to the x prime axis to figure all these stresses, and I can get an expression for sigma y prime. And uh, uh, I didn't write that down for the sake of brevity, but uh, you get an expression that looks a lot like this one here. Then on page 447 in the book, uh, Hibbler shows how you use some trig functions to simplify these equations for sigma x prime, tau x prime, y prime, down to this equation, this equation for tau x prime, y prime, and this equation for sigma y prime. Actually, he gets those two from these two equations, and then he plugs in a value of theta of 90 plus theta and uses trig functions to get sigma y prime. Because sigma y prime is occurring on an axis that's 90 degrees further rotated in the positive direction from theta. Okay, now we know how to figure out the stresses on any inclined plane of any angle theta. But we want, as design engineers, we want to know often the maximum stresses that we need to design for. So we call those the principal normal stresses. That means maximum and minimum. And then another useful uh, stress that we need to know sometimes is the maximum in plane shear stress. Shear causes some materials to fail and it causes uh, and normal stresses are what causes usually brittle materials to fail. Shear stress often causes ductile materials to fail. Anyway, we take the derivative of sigma x, I think it's prime, with respect to theta and we get an expression for the principal axes, axes where the normal stresses are the greatest and the least. And that expression looks like this, tangent to theta p, where p stands for principal. That tangent is equal to this function of known quantities, tau xy over sigma xy minus sigma x minus sigma y over 2. Once I know that, I can solve for theta p and I can plug it back into this formula here and there are two solutions to that that are 180 degrees apart for sigma p, for theta p and so that gives me this expression for maximum and minimum normal stresses which we call sigma 1 for the max and sigma 2 for the minimum it's sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus or minus the square root of all this. Similarly, I can get the derivative of tau x prime y prime over with respect to theta. I can get a, an expression for the tangent to theta s where the s stands for the shear that gives me the theta angle for the maximum shear. Solve that, plug that theta value into this 
expression for tau x prime y prime and get the maximum shear stress is this expression here. Also, I will see that my maximum shear stress where that occurs is where I can plug that uh, value of theta s into this equation and I can see that my sigma is an average value because it'll be the same for both uh, both solutions of this because this one this theta also gives me two solutions for uh, shear so my sigma average is sigma x plus sigma y over 2 which is the average of the two stresses that I know going in sigma x and sigma y I will also note that theta s is which is the shear stress max angle is equal to the principal stress theta p plus 45 degrees so my maximum shear always occurs on an inclined plane 45 degrees away from my principal stresses okay this is a bunch of formulas that we derive from a sum of forces equilibrium equation then there's this thing called Mohr circle which is a wonderful wonderful thing because it expresses all these concepts in a graphical visual way that makes it easy to understand and manipulate so I take a, uh, a graph and I define the horizontal axis as positive sigma or that's tensile normal stress the only weird thing is kind of weird is that I'm defining my positive shear stress which from my sign convention is up on the right side as down so it's only counterintuitive thing the way I start this is I know go back to what I know my sigma x sigma y from my statics analysis and from the formulas mc over i and vq over it and all those equations that give me my shear and uh, normal stresses and I plot them on this circle here I've plotted sigma x is this far over on the sigma on the positive sigma axis and tau xy I've just plotted that point tau xy with respect to uh, the positive tau shear stress axis here similarly I plot sigma y and I use the same value of tau xy but it's negative in this case so I just plot that value here I got it from my stress element then I figure what's the average my, where's the center of the circle gonna be the center of the circle is at uh, sigma average and that's sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 I just take these two values and add them and divide by 2 plot that point then I run a line through them and that's my diameter of my Mohr circle then all these other properties are going to start to fall into place um, if I know this value as sigma x plus sigma y over 2 I can figure out what this value is from my center which is at sigma x plus sigma y over 2 as sigma x minus sigma y so look at that sigma x is this distance here sigma y is this distance here from here to here so the difference in there is this length right here from here to here okay that divided by 2 gives me this leg of this triangle here sigma x minus sigma y over 2 that is the uh, cosine length of this angle times this hypotenuse I can figure this distance from the positive sigma axis down here is just tau xy so if I want to know the radius this length I can just do the square root of the sum of the squares the square root of this the square root of this squared plus the square root of this I mean square this and square this and 
and then take the square root. So the radius is the square root of all that. But then now I'm starting to see some patterns here. This looks like an expression I've got up here. Well, first I've got sigma average. The center of the circle is the sigma average that I calculated when I was doing my maximum shear stress. Okay, this expression for the maximum and minimum stresses looks like this whole thing put together. Sigma x plus sigma y over 2 is the center of the circle. And then plus or minus this expression. This expression is my radius. So it really makes sense. Here's where I'm starting. And if I want to know the maximum, I add the radius to that value. I have to say plus the radius. So I get to my sigma 1 or sigma max over here. If I say minus that value of the radius, then I get to my sigma 2 or sigma minimum. I note now, when I'm at sigma max and sigma minimum, my shear stress is zero, which I could have found out by plugging this value, sigma p, into this expression, and the shear stress on that plane, where the stress is the maximum, normal stresses are maximum, is zero. So I see all these uh, formula relationships coming into play down here. Where is my sigma max? I still have the same expression, I mean a uh, shear stress max, tau max, is this expression which is my radius. So it shows that my shear stress maximum shown on more circles right up here is the radius. So I start at the center and just go straight up or straight down and I get that expression. So this is also equal to tau, tau max. I see my angles, all my angles on Mohr circle are doubled. Two times sigma principle, my theta principle, my theta principle uh, angle direction takes me to, in a positive clockwise, counterclockwise direction, takes me to this axis where I get my maximum stress. If I add, in this case, 2 times 45 degrees, that takes me from my x, y axis, from my x axis, up to the angle that tau max occurs at. So it's 2 times theta p plus 90 degrees. It looks like this relationship here. Uh, sigma principle plus 45 degrees is equal to sigma shear max.